And welcome to week nine, day two. Um, again, this week our main focus is going to be on medical emergencies. So um, that's again going to be talking about chapter 43. Um, just like in day one, um, on day two, like I said, Heart Solutions is going to come back and see us. Um, and his main focus that day will be on first aid. So I'm going to touch back on a little bit about what I talked about in uh, the day one video, uh, which was, again, chapter 43. We began our discussion on medical emergencies and somewhat on some that you might encounter. Um, like we talked about in the video, you could see things such as, you know, handling respiratory emergencies, handling chest pain emergencies, or shock. And when Heart Solutions came in, uh, they went over CPR with you, situations in which CPR and choking might be a response that you need to have, and how you appropriately do that for not only adults, but children and infants as well. On day one in the video, we also talked about um, your responsibility as the medical assistant in some of those situations. We also learned more about the Good Samaritan laws and what an emergency crash cart is, and what are some things that you might find on that crash cart. So for the day two video, we are going to discuss some first aid and some of the emergencies that you might encounter that require first aid as a response. Now, first aid is the assistance given to any person suffering a sudden illness or injury with care that provides to preserve life, prevent the caution from worsening, or the condition from worsening, and to promote or help with recovery. Some situations and emergencies that you might catch yourself in or a patient in that will need some first aid help will be patients who are bleeding, those with open wounds, soft tissue injuries, and burns. So let's kind of look at each one of those a little bit further. So we're going to start off talking about patients who are bleeding. Now bleeding that you can deal with um, can be external or on the outside or internal and on the inside. External bleeding is going to occur when the skin is actually going to be broken. This type of bleeding can be controlled and we can control it by applying pressure, a pressure bandage around the injured site and maintaining that pressure until we can get the blood to stop. If you can't get the blood to stop, hold the pressure until emergency services do arrive and they can take over care. Now, if you are dealing with a patient who is bleeding and you notice that you put a pressure bandage on but the blood is seeping through that bandage, Apply a second one or more, apply more bandages, but never remove the first one. Because what tends to happen is your blood is starting to form clots and those clots are attaching to the bandage. If you take the first bandage off, it's like essentially ripping open a new wound all over again. Internal bleeding, on the other hand, is going to occur when there's damage to the tissues or the intact skin within the body. This type of bleeding is really very difficult to diagnose in the medical office. It's really not going to start showing until there's some sort of external bleeding. Okay. This is one that you probably won't deal with very often, and if you do, it's going to be more the provider that deals with it than you as the medical assistant. Next topic would be open wounds. Now, open wounds and bleeding go hand in hand. Open wounds are seldom life-threatening unless they actually penetrate the head, chest, throat, or abdomen. If any of those things are punctured during an open wound, then they could be considered life-threatening. For those types of situations, you would want to call emergency medical services um, and get paramedics out there to help you. 
a medical assistant, um, one thing that you can really do when we're talking about open wounds is try to control the bleeding. Uh, just like you heard me talk about in the external bleeding part, because things open wounds are really not life-threatening, you'll be more responsible for irrigating the situation with water and for soap and water, doing debridement, which is removing any you know skin or tissues that are in the way, applying sutures, and applying antibiotics. When we're talking about open wounds, there are some wound care pointers that you want to take uh, into caution and you want to follow. The first thing is, is you want to apply a dressing. And that dressing needs to be sterile and placed directly over the wound to absorb any blood or bodily fluid. When you're doing this, any time that there's an open wound or there's open blood or bodily fluids, Please make sure that you're wearing the appropriate PPE as well. Make sure you've got gloves on. If there's any chance that it could spray up or splash into your face, make sure you're wearing that goggles and a mask to at least protect your nose, your mouth, and your eyes. You can also apply a bandage, which is just a strip of binding material to hold the pressure dressing in place. This could be anything from rolling gauze or elastic bandages like Coban, or it could actually be a Band-Aid or bandage of that sort, okay? That job of that is really to hold that pressure dressing in place. And again, if that dressing becomes soiled, apply another one over the top of that. Never remove the first one. If you have soft tissue injuries, this is trauma that involves both the skin and the underlying tissue. Uh, for soft tissue injuries, you want to elevate the body part above the heart that is injured and apply a cold pack. So if you've ever, maybe you twisted your ankle or you sprained your wrist, um, the first thing that they tell you to do is hold your the body part above your heart, that's just to keep the blood flow going to it um, and hopefully to prevent any swelling that may happen. Same thing with adding the cold pack, it's to help prevent the swelling and cold actually sometimes will help with pain. If you have a more severe um, soft tissue injury, you want to immobilize that body part, make it so it doesn't move. So you've ever seen maybe uh, TV shows or maybe you've been involved in an accident where they put you in a neck brace? That could be considered an immobilizer to keep that soft tissue from moving around and getting more uh, injured. And burns is the last part that I want to talk about. Uh, so this is a type of injury that occurs when an area of tissue is destroyed by the actions of physical heat, chemical activity, electrical current, or high exposure to radiation. The severity of burns will depend on the amount of skin and tissues that are um, involved and the depth of the injury. So when you're treating burns, it's always best to put cool water on the burn. Um, what this does is it will soothe the area, but you can only do that if there are no broken blisters. If there are broken blisters, adding the cold water will actually cause more burning. Burns should be dressed with a dry, sterile dressing, and pain should be managed with any injectable um, anagelics but those have to be ordered by your providers. You cannot make that determination yourself as a medical assistant. All right, guys, that's where I'm really going to stop for the day two video. Um, I want you to read your chapter. Um, make sure that you touch up on some of the things that I've talked about, but also some of the things I did not talk about. So make sure that you're reading those completely. And as always, you can do those end of the chapter reviews if you really want some extra practice in those. Because Heart Solutions is coming out on day two of this week, 
I really want to stress that you guys arrive on time. Not only is it rude to the instructor when you guys show up late, but it's also disrespectful to your classmates because they have to stop and wait for you to get set up as well. So please make sure that you arrive to class on time, 8 a.m. on day two, and we are going to be learning about first aid with heart solutions. Have a wonderful week, guys. Bye-bye.